Hey, welcome back to our show. We've been looking at products all morning, and Steve McGuinn from Smith Medical has come to show us their insulin pump. And he's from North Carolina? That's correct, Durham, North Carolina. So I'm gonna enjoy listening to him talk. So uh, tell us about your pump and what makes it different from the rest. Well, our pump, which is actually a new pump as of December of last year, just gained FDA approval for that pump back in December, and it has 14 new features in comparison to our pump prior to that model, which was the model 1700. Now we've come out with the model 1800 that has a lot of new features on it uh, that may be more specific to their patients and their needs to give, create much better outcomes. What are the 14 new features? The 14 new features are we're offering a disconnect bolus for patients now. They have the option to disconnect from the pump from 15 minutes up to two hours and have the, the basal insulin that they're going to miss delivered as a bolus up front. But we're only going to allow them to deliver 50% of that basal at max. The one thing the pump doesn't know is, is what am I getting ready to go do next? Right. If I'm going to go exercise a lot after I'm doing this disconnect, I may not need all 50% of that basal. Right. But if I'm going to go sit in an MRI machine for an hour, I may need all 50% of that basal. So now I'm going to be able to offer the, offer the patient the capability to deliver the missed basal as a bolus up front and remind them after that time period is over to reconnect to the pump. It's always going to ask for a blood sugar so that I can correct from wherever I am. Okay, you brought up MRI machine and we were just talking about how that shuts down other pumps, doesn't it? Wouldn't it shut down this pump too? Uh, well, that's why you're disconnecting obviously. You're disconnecting because we, we tell people in our, in our literature and all of our literature that, that if you're going to get in any type of magnetic field that they need to disconnect from their insulin. Okay. The pump uh, has no history of over delivery based on magnetic uh, um, contact but it will shut down. The pump will shut down. Okay. I also wanted to add, uh, I was chatting with Steve. He and I have had diabetes uh, the same number of years. We both got it in 1974. Uh, he's a little bit younger than me. He was three years old. That's correct. Uh, three which, years. That must have been quite a thing. I mean, you probably don't even remember. I, I don't remember uh, anything prior to being diagnosed with diabetes. As a matter of fact, the very first thing I remember in my life is the glucose tolerance test. Going to the hospital for that my very first thing I remember. How old were you when your, uh, your parents turned con control over to you and taking shots? And uh, I gave my first insulin injection to myself at diabetic summer camp uh, at age eight, okay. uh, which was about the same time that we first started seeing our first blood glucose meters uh, at camp. And uh, you know, my parents did a great job of moving me into controlling myself. Early teens, uh, I would help make make uh, make adjustments to my to my insulin. Um, you know, back then, we were taking two shots of regular and NPH a day. Uh, certainly, much different than what we're doing now. Uh, doing a lot of diet control. Uh, now it's a lot more fast-acting insulin. Right. We have more flexibility. Much more flexibility yeah. than we had. That's correct. This pump's pretty smart. It, uh, he was showing me it has a meter built in on the back that you put strips from the... It's the Abbott Freestyle test strip. The Abbott Freestyle. And so I was just asking him, what if you, you test your 200 and you want to eat a meal with 60 grams of carbohydrates? What the happens? Pump, the pump has uh, some programmed information in it already that you have programmed in along with your healthcare provider uh, to know how many units of insulin it would take to work on X number of grams of carbs, in your case 60 grams of carbs. So you would program that number into the pump and based on you needing one unit of insulin to cover 15 grams of carbs. Is that what you are? No, I'm actually one to 10. Okay, so, so one one, to 10. If, if I was one to 10 on my insulin to carb ratio and I ate 60 grams of carbs, 60 divided by 10 would give me six units of insulin. So it does all that math for you. But what it can do on top of that is, is if I put a blood sugar into the pump that is above target, so let's say it's 200. It's 200, and my correction factor is one to 50. One my, unit will drop him 50 points. And my target blood sugar is 100. I always want to be at 100. My pump is going to make all calculations to get me to 100 milligrams per deciliter. Then it's going to take that 200 minus the 100, which is your target. I need to cover 100 grams or 100, 100 milligrams per deciliter for correction. So it takes my 50, divides it into the 100. So I need two units of insulin to fix my higher blood sugar. Plus the six for the Plus meal. Plus the six for the meal. So it'll, it'll say you should take eight units. That is and correct. You'll go, okay. That is correct. 
The two things that once this pump is all programmed that you need to give it every time is you need to give it a blood sugar reading and you need to give it the amount of grams of carbohydrates that you're putting into your mouth. After that, the pump will tell you exactly what to do. Make a recommendation based on the math. So give it, you mean you just need to test with the meter attached to the pump like this? That's correct. It uses the, uses the display on the pump as the display for your blood checking device. Inputs all the information into the pump, saves it so that you have the capability to download all of that information, to look at cycles, look at trends, and to make clinical decisions based on that information. What else makes this pump stand apart from the others in the field? Well, the bigger things are is that it does have a blood glucose meter attached to the max. And no so other pump has that. No other pump has okay. that. You don't have to carry an extra blood glucose meter around with you. You always have it on your pump. The other things are is that my pump is entirely waterproof and it is warranted waterproof for four years. It is IPX8 rated, which means 12 feet of water, 30 minutes. If you're going to be splashing around on top of the water and you're not going scuba diving, then you can wear your insulin pump as long as you'd like. Okay. I wear my pump in the ocean, I wear it in the pool, I wear it in the river, in the pond. So uh, just clean it off real nice when I'm done. Just rinse it off with clean water? Just rinse it off with clean water. Even the, can't water go in where the strips go? Blood glucose meter is not waterproof. You have okay. to pull that off to, to take it into the water. I see. So, and you would you can't use that by itself, there's no screen? You cannot, you cannot. Okay. You cannot. So you just reattach it when you dry the pump off? Reattach it when you get back on. That's correct. That's really cool. This is uh, this has been great having you come over. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.